When the McLaren 720S was launched at 18 months ago out in Italy, I drove it twice. And it's fair to say I was less than effusive in my praise for it. There were bits I loved and bits I was very impressed by, but overall I just I didn't quite gel with it. Others seem to agree on that launch, although some seem to have forgotten by the time they came to write their reviews. Anyway, since then, I've kept an eye on it, and it's won all sorts of awards, and things that I was sort of critical of seem to have been praised, so I was intrigued. Had it been improved, albeit not officially? When McLaren announced the track pack for the 720S, I thought that sounded like a perfect opportunity to try it again, here in the UK. The question is, Will I fall in love with a 720S this time? Just to recap, the 720S is the replacement for the 650S in McLaren's Super Series. It produces a handy 720 brake horsepower and 568 pounds-foot of torque from its 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8. It has a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox driving the rear wheels, still with no limb-to-slip diff, and it weighs in at a little over 1,400 kilos in standard trim. Acceleration is the swift side of brisk, with 0-62 miles an hour taking just 2.9 seconds, and it will hit 212 miles an hour flat out. So what do you actually get for the track pack? Well, it's probably best to think of it as uh, like the Club Sport to uh, GT3's comfort spec, that sort of thing. It is not quite important to point this out, this is not an LT version of a 720S. So you get quite a lot of carbon fibre, uh, you get these lovely carbon fibre bucket seats which I think are absolutely wonderful. I even prefer these to the Senna seats. You still sit just perhaps a little bit high, these are on their lowest setting and if you're tall like me you could feel like you could go even closer to the floor but generally the seating position is absolutely wonderful. You also get some new forged lightweight wheels, 10 spoke are very nice indeed. Importantly though, none of the suspension has actually changed at all, so the proactive chassis control, exactly the same. Overall, the track pack equipped car saves 24 kilos and will set you back just over £28,000, taking the total to a whisker over £253,000, which is not cheap, but then supercars never were. Ironically, perhaps one of the most divisive aspects of the 720S, namely its appearance, is something I rather like. The socket headlights are interestingly distinctive, and the overall shape is beautifully, swoopingly curvaceous and sleek. I'm a fan. As soon as I got back into this, there were certain things that I remembered from driving it first time round that I still really, really like about this car. The visibility, this view out through the car, not only through the front, but also behind is just fantastic. The brakes too, they don't bite right at the top of the pedal, but as soon as you're into that travel, you get fantastic feel from the carbon stoppers. The ability to easily left foot brake remains wonderful too, with the pedal placement perfect whichever foot you want to use. And you will want to use those big carbon ceramic discs. The other thing of course that very quickly becomes apparent is that this is just sensationally fast. It was a thing that I really blew me away when I first drove this car. And that hasn't changed at all. This is actually wearing normal Pizero rubber instead of courses, which the track pack would normally come on. So traction is definitely a little bit limited in the cold, but actually the traction control it shows up just how good that is. Just nipping here and there. I love it in the dynamic ESC setting where it just lets you slide a bit. So what things did I feel might have changed since those original launch cars? One of the things I noticed straight away was that the steering felt weightier, heavier, more detailed. And that's certainly really nice initially, but we'll come back to that in a bit. The other thing is that this comes from the sports exhaust as standard with a track pack, but it seems to be a different sports exhaust to the one that I tried on the launch because it's so much better. The whole car, but I think particularly the drivetrain, just feels that much rawer, sort of more as you would expect for a supercar. It is so fast as well. The proactive chassis control just demolishes a piece of road like this. The way it copes with the bumps is extraordinary. If you take it out of active, put it back in normal, 
you can actually still use it on a long journey as I did to drive across here and it's perfectly habitable, almost boring. Another detail worth mentioning is the clarity and power of the headlights. Those upright covers to the lenses were touted as being special at the launch and I wondered if I'd notice a difference, but they are brilliant, if you'll pardon the pun. Just another thing that makes this a very usable supercar. So is it all good? Have I fallen in love with the 720S? Am I revising my opinion entirely? Perhaps not entirely. In the dry like this, the car has so much grip and you are going so fast and yet the car still doesn't really seem untroubled. That can feel a bit frustrating as a road car because you want to be part of it, not just impressed by it. I definitely think it's better on a bumpier road like this because inevitably you're going to feel more involved. And in fact, driving this during the sort of the colder conditions and the wet was really nice because then you could feel the chassis moving around a bit more. You felt like part of the action. So, too fast. Is that a quibble? I don't know. <laughs> One thing I'm still not entirely sure about is the steering. Around the straight ahead, as I said before, it's got lovely weighting and it feels like you've got lots of, well, feel. But actually it turns out to be weighting. You feel the bumps through it, but in terms of actually how hard you're pushing the front end, it's still quite difficult, particularly in tighter corners like this. As soon as you get probably about 45 degrees or more of lock-on, it's just it's really quite difficult to actually tell how hard you're pushing the front tires. And I remember that, particularly from on track before when I drove this. So no, the steering to me isn't perfect, and I suppose that's probably to do with the proactive chassis control. It's something I haven't felt in the lower sports series cars, which I, I adore, and for me, that's why I think those are still the ones to have. This car felt much more engaging than those launch versions I drove 18 months ago. Its breadth of ability remains incredible. Even in track pack guys, it can mooch comfortably, but then at the press of a button, astonish with the speed it can cover ground. There is perhaps still a sense that when you're at five or six tenths sort of pace, when you want to be entertained but not excessive, the 720S still lacks a little sparkle, although admittedly the lower grip of cold or wet conditions sorts that nicely. At the end of the day, a 570S remains the McLaren for me. I prefer the steering and I just don't think you need more than that to get the full usable supercar experience. Having said that, Power is addictive. <laughs>if you're wondering what to watch next then might i boldly suggest the 570 gt film we did up in scotland and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel then you can do so just by clicking the button on the left thank you